Good morning, everyone, and hello from the North Park at the Alliant Energy Center here at the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games as we get set for women's 55 to 59 event number four. I'm Ted Ramey alongside Justin Judkins. We've got Nick, Nick Zielinski down on the floor, and as we get set, let's take a look at our standings and the veteran Mary Beth Bonides is at the top of the leaderboard, Justin. Yeah, she had three top four finishes yesterday. The second place in event number two, so imp impressive start to her games this year. So what are our athletes getting themselves into this time? Okay, it's going to be four rounds for time. It's a 300-meter run, four rope climbs, and a 44-foot yoke carry. Each round, the number of rope climbs will decrease by one repetition. And let's take a look at our lane assignments as we get set for event number four here for the women's 55 to 59. You see Merrimack Bromitas there in lane number 10. You also see Jacqueline Janet there in lane nine. Pay attention to her. Bianca Williams, 11. Sue Vela in lane number 12. And this is our three-time CrossFit Master Champion, Mary Beth Promides. Having a great time out there yesterday. She had a lot of her followers watching her, Justin, and she just looked like she was having a very good time. One of the best things about Mary Beth is she always has a huge smile on her face, and I love to see that. <laughs> We're getting a look at Bianca Williams, who had an impressive first day at the competition. She finds herself in second place. Now taking a look at Vela now, 19th in this, or in the 50 to 54 division in 2017. She's aged into the 55 to 59. Kelly Dean, she was third in the 55 to 59 division in 2017. Yes, they do. Let's pause for the start. No shortage of attitude from our competitors to start off day two of the competition for the women's 55 to 59 event number four starting in on that run sorry ted yeah starting in on that 300 meter run some of these ladies jumping out to a pretty quick pace i would think that they're gonna maintain that uh maybe slow it up on each successive round because they'll try to do a little bit of recovery as they're running but they are starting out with a bang here at the beginning and they go from this 300 meter run to rope climbs and then a yoke carry. And I thought it was a valid question, Justin, to ask. You're going to be out of my way, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Coming up on the one minute mark. Now, this is the North Park where we're situated at, but you see the Coliseum in the background. That's where some of the competition is taking as well on this campus. Where CrossFit has definitely set up shop and is using the entirety of this location to uh, set up just these great venues. Like this, just the difference between this venue last year to this year, Justin, is incredible. Oh, yeah. I mean, lots of avenues to uh, explore testing fitness, right? There's, there's really not much that we cannot do and test when it comes to fitness. Now, here's where I think this event's going to be decided, and that's going to be the road climb. So this first round, they've got four road climbs. I think they need to attack them without hesitation. So when they come off of the run, don't stand there and look at the rope. With in between each rope climb, once again, don't stand there and look at the rope. Make sure that you're efficient on your ascent and efficient on your descent. So take big chunks out of that rope. Try to bring those feet up as high as you can. Get that good foot clamp and foot pinch. And then stand up straight and tall to get your next pull. Two minutes, 10, ten seconds gone by. There is a 20-minute cap here on event number four. And we've seen so far today, Ted, the ladies that can do well on this rope climb are finishing at the top of the event. Jacqueline Janet. So she's really pinched. She's not feeling real secure with that foot clamp. So you see her pinching her with her legs. And that just kind of hampers being able to stand up 
uh, straight and tall and to do it fast. Janae came in today third overall. As we approach the three minute mark. And there you see that, that foot clamp. And what you want to do is use your opposite foot to wrap that foot around your uh, your strong leg and then stamp down on it, pinch it in between both feet and then stand up straight and tall. See her reverse it on the way down? That was kind of interesting. And it looks like a Rambo out in the lead. She makes her way to her second 300 meter run. That's Donna Ramo. Yeah, she did so well event, in event number one yesterday. Had that fifth place finish and then stumbled a little bit on event number two with that 15th place finish. And that, that kind of dropped her down a little bit in the overall standing. So she needs a strong performance here. And, and that's what you have to do as an athlete. When, when your event comes up, it plays well to your strengths. You've really got to crush that one and knock that one out of the park. And it looks like that's exactly what she's trying to do here. She was 13th entering the day. So looking to make her way up the leaderboard. She makes her way back into the North Park. Mother of Christy Aramo, of course, part of a high quality CrossFit family. In fact, I think Christy won event number two on the individual side yesterday, those 30 uh, ring muscle ups for time. Hey guys, watching down here from the floor, listen to you guys talk about Donna Aramo. And I think Kelly Dean was in second place going into this second round of uh, rope climbs yoke, and yoke carry. What kind of confidence does this do for the ladies that are sitting in 10th or in 13th place to, to get a win in this event or event later today that are down on that leaderboard? To get a win now go, and going into that rest day tomorrow, how much of a mental uh, win is that for someone heading into a rest day before another day of competition? Well, personally, Nick, I think it's huge simply because I mean, every athlete that's out on the field right now is a high-performing a high performing athlete, right? Like, they're at the top of their game. And so those little things like the mental strength that each athlete will carry into each event is huge. And, and the experience that they rely on from past games uh, to recover the right way, all of those things play into how they're going to perform next. And so um, I think that it's really important that to end on a, a strong note here on day number two so that you enter that rest day and, and then come back into the rest of the competition uh, in fine form. Bianca Williams there, center screen. Five minutes and 50 seconds have gone by. 20-minute cap here. For the rope and yoke, event number four of the Masters Women's 55 to 59 competition. So 245 pounds on the yoke, as, as it's empty, it's 245 pounds. So that's the weight that they're moving. And uh, Donna Aramo doing a great job on that yoke carry. Moving very nicely, and she's making her way back to the next 300 meter run. Six minutes, 40 seconds gone by. She's got that weight belt on for that yoke carry just simply because it does really tax that core So the more support that you can get through uh, for that midline stabilization As you've got that big heavy weight on your back then then the more that support is going to help you Deramo was seventh in the 55 59 division in 2017 10th 55 59 Still keeping a pretty pretty fast pace on that run. Aramo, our leader here in event number four. And she's giving herself quite a bit of distance against the field. 
Yeah, she's really building a nice lead. Arma makes her way back into the North Park. Approaching the eight minute mark. The nice thing too, Ted, is knowing that each round, the number of rope climbs that you have to do decreases by a rep. Just mentally, that gives you like, just a little bit of a push to go, okay, I've done a majority of the work already. I'm halfway through this event. And now I don't have to do as much work when it comes to rope climb as I've already done. And I think just mentally, it gives you a little bit of an edge to push it just a little bit harder in those last couple rounds. Just because you know you don't have as many rope climbs to do. Again, she was 13th. After the first day of competition. Now on the left, that is her daughter, Christy Aramo, doing the back squat. And grinding her way out of it. <laughs> 320 pounds on a back squat for a, a, a young lady is so impressive. And you see like mother, like daughter, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree there. And one final 300 meter run for Aramo. Yeah, she's really jumped out to a lead early on, and she's maintained that lead. He actually even extended her lead with each successive round. And she's looking to lap some competitors. Yeah. The thread of the needle as she makes her way to the front of the pack. I'm sure just mentally, I, I know I've talked about the, the mental edge here and the mental side of this quite a bit today, but man, when you're when you're lapping competitors, you know you've only got one round left, uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to, to feel confident going into that last rope climb and that last yoke carry. This is Aramo, our leader in the light top, lapping competitors. Again, entered the day in 13th. Changing that here in the early goings of day number two. Yeah, she really is. Back to the rope climb for Aramo. Shaking the arms out a little bit right before she gets there. No hesitation. Just as soon as she gets to the rope, she jumps up and latches on and starts climbing that thing. I'd like to see that. Yeah, very nice performance by Donna Aramo. Making it look easy as she makes her way to the yoke one last time. Aramo entered the day in 13th place in the 55 to 59 division. That will change. And she powers to the finish and takes event number four, rope and yoke for the 55-59 division. Donna Aramo. Wow, nicely done. She ended day one with 100 points. Now in event number four, she wins another 100 points. So she doubles her points in just one event. Jenna there in the white top. As she makes her way back to one more 300 meter run. Now there's still a lot of time left. 
seven minutes and 20 seconds. That just speaks to how far out in front Aramo was. Yeah, it really does. You can get a nice visual of that now. We've got Thompson in there. Lynn Mathen was in yeah. second, yeah. And we had Debbie Downing there coming in in lane 17. Aramo 53 seconds ahead of where Knappen was. That is so impressive. You see Hiley Thompson in there. Kelly Dean is in now. Kelly Dean placing fourth in this event. Here's Judith Tynan we see pushing to the finish. Now Williams is in. Mary Beth finishes ninth here, Ted. So coming into this event in first place overall, uh, that, that'll definitely slip her down the leaderboard. So that was Mod Hecht coming in in lane 19. Get a shot of Bianca Williams there. She came in eighth. Litza Olsen now finishing her third round. She'll head back for one more 300 meter run for one more rope climb and one more yoke carry. Five minutes remain here. Rope and yoke, Masters Women, Division 55 to 59. It's event number four. It is the first event of day number two. Yvonne Howard coming in. And this is such an interesting event to me, Ted, because, uh, you know, the yoke carry, the larger, stronger athletes are going to definitely do better on that part, but the more lithe ath athletes that have really good technique on a gymnastics movement like the rope climb and a body weight movement are going to do better on the rope climbs. So it is an interesting event because of the different components of this triplet. Janae coming in. Just over four minutes remain. Egan coming in in lane eight. So she'll place 13th in this event. Shelly Louise. Three and a half minutes. comes in. She makes her way across the line at about 1720. 
So one more 300 meter run for the two women walking and running left to right on your screen. Two minutes remain. Yeah, you can really tell who's been doing their homework over the course of the past year, who's been doing the rope climbs. You know, we, we had one athlete in the interview and she mentioned that she's lucky because her affiliate has every piece of equipment known to man, right? Yeah. And uh, he really played a lot on those strongman stuff with the tires and the, and the yoke carries. And so you can see who's put in the work and, and done the homework with the rope climbs too. Sam Kuzar. She was 20th overall entering the day. And she'll hold back, hold back for another 300 meter run. Lisa looks like she'll be able to finish under that time cap, which we mentioned before in some of the other age divisions. I think that that's huge to be able to finish this event under the time cap. Olsen, that final carry. And Good. Olsen will come in under the cap. Yep. <laughs> Gotta remember to touch that chest piece. Twenty seconds remain. So it looks like we'll have a couple competitors that weren't able to complete this under that time cap. Five seconds. And the horn will sound. And Aramo, just an impressive victory by about a minute, taking event number four. And just really putting herself in a good position, starting off the day in 13th place. And that's going to change her leaderboards, most specifically, but it's going to shake things up from top to bottom. Yeah, this leaderboard is going to get shaken up, but Donna Aramo started out with a fast run at the very, very beginning. And on each successive run, she maintained that same pace. But really, it was these rope climbs and how efficient she was on the way up, but also how efficient she was on the way down that helped her jump out to that early lead. Strong through the oak, you know, no, no real bobbles. She was able to complete all of them unbroken. Didn't have to set that yoke down, which is big because it wastes valuable seconds. But passing and lapping competitors on the final round, still strong even on that last and final rope climb. So great job by Donna Aramo doubling her points as she marches up the overall leaderboard. Lynn Natman, the experienced competitor coming into this game. You see her strong on that yoke carry. This is her uh, ninth game. And so great job by Lynn Natman coming in second place. All right, let's send this down to Nick Zielinski on the floor. Donna Aramo, event four winner. We saw strong running performances out of you last year. Knowing that running is a strength of yours, how do you approach an event like this as you're trying to climb that leaderboard? Well, I think I know I'm a strong runner, so I had to focus on the rope climbs because I'm not that good there. <laughs> you look just fine there. What was the strategy for those? Uh, to take my time and not go up and down four times really fast. You look great doing those nine rope or those ten rope climbs, four, three, two, one, right? You're competing this week with your daughter at the games as well. What are those conversations like at night as you get home? Is it is it a converse, is it strategy talk or is it just hey how you doing? It's go have fun and do what you can do. Well, you did what you can do very well, Donna Aaron. Well, congratulations. We'll see you later today. Thank you. So Aramo, our winner of event number four. Again, almost a minute ahead of Lynn Knappen, followed by Hailey Thompson, Kelly Dean, Colleen Fahey, Debbie Downing, Judith Tynan, Bianca Williams, Marybeth Promitas coming in ninth, followed by Maude Hecht. 
And that's the one I think we're looking at, Justin, is Mary Beth Romita's coming in ninth. How do you think that changes her outlook the rest of today? Well, that's scary. Uh, you know, she's going to drop from first place down quite a bit. So she's going to have to come up big. We've got more events later on today, and she's going to really have to dig down deep. She's got the experience to do it. She's got the conditioning and the fitness to be able to rely on her training. And so I feel confident she'll be able to come back, but it's going to be a tough, a, a long road to hoe. That was the Donna Aramo show as she flexes on the field almost a minute ahead. We're going to take a break. We've got more coming up next.
Good morning, everyone, and hello from Madison, Wisconsin, the home of the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games as we get a beautiful shot of the Capitol. Action of plenty so far this morning here inside the North Park at Alliant Energy Center as we get set for the women's 60 and over event number four of the competition, the Open Yoke. I'm Ted Rainey, alongside my good friend Justin Judkins, and we've also got Nick Zielinski down on the floor. Let's take a look at our standings as we head into the first competition of day number two for these women, and we see no surprises, Justin, Patty Fela at the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, she was last year's champion. She comes in with a wealth of experience. This is her fifth game, so expect her to come out firing on all cylinders. Again, we see April Kitagawa down there rounding out the top ten. What are we looking at with this event, Justin? They're going to be taking on four rounds. It's a triplet, so the three different movements that they'll be doing will be a 300-meter run, followed by four rope climbs and a 44-foot yoke carry. Then each round, the number of reps on the rope climbs decreases by one rep. There's a 20-minute time cap. As we get set for event number four, let's take a look at our lane assignments to see where our athletes will be lining up. Pay attention to Patty Fela there in lane number 10, Marsha Yeager in lane number nine. Lane 12, the Swede Piagunt. Also, Sean Havard in lane number 11. And also Jen Stagg in lane number 19. And you want to talk about a model of consistency yesterday. Sean had all three finishes. She placed second in all three events yesterday. Get a look at Pia Goons. We see Lisa Long behind her. Linda Hardy. Ten seconds. April Kitagawa. Pauline Ciasia. Day two for the Masters Women's 60 and over is underway here at the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games. Starting off with a 300 meter run as they make their way around. Four rope climbs are waiting for them when they get back to their lane assignments. Yeah, this is just a nice little buy-in to the event. Open up the lungs and uh, get the blood flowing through the legs a little bit here. Uh, I don't think that this event will be won or lost on the run, however. I mean, you'll see some jockeying. I think that the ladies will use the later rounds kind of as a time to recover just a little bit from the other work that they're going to be doing. As we see them make their way down the back stretch towards the re-entry portion of the park. Up above, you can get a shot of the Coliseum. So much happening here on this Wisconsin, of course, in the second year with its home here in Madison, Wisconsin, at the University of Wisconsin. And so far, it seems that in two years of the Reebok CrossFit game, Justin, it seems like people are enjoying themselves. No well, way. there's so many things to do here. It's such a fun city. Uh, it's not called Mad Town for nothing, right? Cheese curds. <laughs> That's right. And cheese curds. Now, I think that if the ladies are going to win this event, if the lady's going to win this event, it's because she does well on the rope climb. So I'm saying attack that rope without hesitation. Once you get off the run, don't stand and look at the rope. Jump right on it and get going. You've got to be efficient on your poles. You've got to get a good clamp with those legs and stretch tall and high so that you can turn this into more of a leg exercise rather than an upper body pulling exercise. Two minutes into the 20 minute cap. Sometimes, Ted, the, the descent is just as important as the ascent when it comes to climbing this rope. And so, see, some ladies do a great job climbing up fast, but then whether it's fear or just not getting the right grip the way that they want to, they take a long time coming down, and you want to alleviate those times in an event where you're, where, where you're wasting valuable seconds. Getting a good clamp, trying to bring those feet up as high as you can so that you can... Uh, climb that rope in just as few of poles as possible. It's 
Marcia Yeager we're getting a shot up now as she makes her way first out to the yoke. This is Patty Fela, defending champion. See, she's not using her legs very much. It's requiring her to use a lot of upper body strength and those smaller muscles, they fatigue a lot faster than those big muscles in your lower body. Fela makes her way out as well. That's Jaeger in the lead. Yeah, look how strong hey she guys, is. Hey guys, we're watching these ladies core. Sorry, tackle guys. this yoke and doing a little research in these ladies' back squat deadlift numbers. I know they're not squatting or deadlifting this yoke, but that yoke's 245 pounds. That's more than any of these ladies' max back squats we have listed in, in our notes. It's only There's only four ladies that have a deadlift heavier than 245 pounds. Obviously, like I said, they're not deadlifting it, they're not squatting it, but that's quite a load to put on these ladies' shoulders, especially when they're not used to having it there. Then it's swinging around, it's moving a little bit as you move, you're not bracing your core, it's got it loose on you. So a whole new apparatus, a familiar apparatus, but a whole new apparatus in this division for these ladies. So it looks like we saw a little bit of confusion an athlete tried to make their way back to the running portion without going through their lane as you saw a judge slipping and sliding trying to instruct them where to go back to the 300 meter run portion four minutes and 30 seconds having gone by so it looks like more of a measured pace on this second round than it was on the first round um, some ladies kind of shaking those arms out using this time to kind of recover that upper body a little bit That's Jaeger in the lead, making her way back to the rope climb portion. She will have three climbs to do this time before making her way to the yoke. You know, Marcia won that third event yesterday, so had that first place finish yesterday, using that momentum as she comes into event number four. Guys, doing some, some studying on Marcia Jaeger, during automatic Masters Automatic Qualifier 3, she tore her ACL. We see players in the NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball tear that ACL. They're out for 9 to 12 months, and that's if they have a somewhat fast recovery. Marsha chose to use the, I want to say this right, Beamer therapy. And all that does, it improves microcirculation to promote blood flow. It improves the body's cells and the body's performance, which means faster healing of the body and its cells. She ended up finishing the automatic qualifier, and here she is, less than four months later, competing at the CrossFit Games. And not only that, she's in third place, and she's leading event four. Quite the comeback story for Marsh Yeager, who tore an ACL less than four months ago. Yeah, Adrian Peterson eats your heart out. We were all, yeah. when he came back in a year, she's coming back in a matter of months. Having a good goal of it so far. Again, she entered the day in third place. And is our leader in the early goings here of event number four, the Rope and Yoke. Well, she's doing a great job climbing that rope. She's getting a really good solid foot clamp. She's using those legs as much as she possibly can. Even after recovering from a torn ACL, that's very impressive. Having gone through that myself, my goodness, to come back after four months. Again, this is our leader in event number four, Marcia Yeager. And this is really taxing on the core, so it's important here that you stay solid through your, your core as you support this load and walk with it. So short, choppy steps is the, is the call for the day here with the yoke carry. You don't want to take those long ones or, or get those long arms on that yoke to start swinging. You want to keep the bottom of that yoke as level as possible. Yeager still out in the lead. Making her way to the 300 meter run, then she'll be back to two rope climbs.
So that's Jaeger in the lead. Followed by Patty Fela. Patty had those two first place finishes yesterday. Coming in first in the overall leaderboard, overall standings in the leaderboard. So this is quite a battle here between uh, Jaeger and Fela. They're making their way through the back stretch of the run portion. Then we back around to the rope climbs. This is who we're looking at for third place right now. Lisa Long in the blue, top. Again, Long now in third, but a ways behind what we saw from Jaeger and Fela. Nine thirty gone by. Looks like Lisa Long is going to get passed if she continues to walk here. Shot of Jaeger, who's back on the ropes. And in this instance, that's a positive. Yeah, yeah, it really is. <laughs> so just two climbs, she's already completed her first. She's doing a good job coming down and, and being smart. Uh, she comes down fast, but not so fast that she's burning her hands. Still maintaining contact with her feet on the rope. Making her way to the yoke for a third time. And after this carry, she'll run 300 meters one more time, then one pull, and then one carry. One rope climb, I should say. You see the core starting to get fatigued here. She's not standing up straight and tall. Her hip is still a little bit closed. But she just has to get a little bit further. She can set it down and rest as she runs on this next round. There's Patty Fela. She got a no rep there. And that's what you you want to avoid at all costs if you can. You want to, you don't want to get halfway up the rope and not be able to make it all the way up there and have that be wasted effort. I mean, in this instance, should she have maybe hesitated a little longer, contrary to what you're saying, because she does look fatigued? Well, we saw from the very beginning, if you remember, she was really using her upper body a lot on these poles. And I think what we're seeing here is the fatigue set in because of that. She switched her technique. Oh, see, now she's getting another no rep. She switched her technique. If you notice, now she's bringing that rope in between her legs and around her right ankle and over the top of her right foot. It's a more secure hold, but yet it takes longer. Um, and I think that she needs to rely less on her upper body and rely more on her lower body. So when you bring that rope in between your legs and feed it over that right foot, you really have to bring those knees up high and kind of kick your leg out so that the rope slides down and you, and you get through that slack. And I think she's struggling with that part of it. This is fail after she's had some trouble. And this could be detrimental to her finish here. 
She's had two no reps in a row. Sometimes that can get in your head a little bit in the middle of a competition. Our leader, Jaeger, making her way back in. And Fela had been chasing her in second place, but now Jaeger is going to come in, and that's potentially going to affect the psychology of Fela. Should oh, yeah. Jaeger come back. Oh, yeah, big time, because uh, Marsha Jaeger is just about to lap Patty Fela. And Fela has got to, get, I say, just you've got to get to the top of that road. Don't come down now. You're within four or five feet of the cross beam. Oh, yeah, that's not, that is not good. Coming up on the 14 minute mark, 20 minute cap in the event. And there's our leader, Jaeger. See, there's a big difference between Fela's technique and Jaeger's technique. Jaeger's using those legs a lot more. And she's getting a really good solid foot clamp. And so it's not taxing her grip as much, and she's not taxing her upper body quite as much either. Now it'll be one last carry. Two hundred and forty five pounds on that yoke. She only has to carry it forty four more feet. An event in four will be in the books for Marcia Yeager. She is way out in front right now. This is Vela who's been having all sorts of trouble trying to get one more rope climb in. But she's still on her round of two. She's been lapped by Yeager. And this is where she's failed every single time. Yeah, she's not she's not using her feet and her legs as effectively as she could. Right now she needs to bring that. Oh yeah. I was gonna say she needed to bring those feet up higher and really clamp down on that rope. Jaeger will take event number four. You're on day two of the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games. She entered the day in third place. And what, what is happening to Patty Failer right now? We are expecting to see some big changes along the leaderboard. And this could potentially put Marcia Yeager atop the leaderboard when this event is done. And this is Fela. She was in second. And she's on a round of two for the rope climb. So she's been lapped. Things are rapidly just going downhill for her in that rope climb right now. Yeah, now it's a little bit of damage control for her because the more athletes the place between her and Marcia Yeager is going to bump her even farther down the leaderboard. So if she wants to do some damage control, she's really got to figure out this rope climb fast. See our next athletes making their way to the yoke. Lisa Long now, yep. So Long going for a second place finish. She comes run right around 17 minutes. This is Patty Fela. And the point at which she's getting stuck, Justin, is just staying a couple inches lower each time, it looks like. Yeah. Now, the closer that she can keep those hands to her chest and keep her arms bent, the better, as long as she can feed that slack through her right leg and stamp on it hard with her left foot. But, boy, each second that she's hanging on that rope is just... just emptying the gas tank all the more. Her, her arms are going to be toast moving yeah. forward in the competition. Yeah. And now I'm afraid that she's going to be doing that so much she's going to burn her hands. Two minutes, ten seconds remain. That's our defending champion having trouble with the rope right now. There's Elizabeth Cole coming in. Less than two minutes remain. 
This is our defending champion. Yeah, that's got to be so frustrating. Uh, here you are in second place, and you see some of Patty's fans. But yeah, she was in second place in this event, situating herself really well. And then uh, on that second round of those rope climbs, she's really got to her. Under 90 seconds remain. We saw Marsha Yeager take the event, followed by Lisa Long. Right now, we're focusing on Patty Fela, who was in second, and now has just been bested by the rope. Fifty seconds remain. So obviously she'll be time capped here. Um, she will get credit for every rep that she's completed. She'll be assessed a one second penalty for every rep left in the event. Carolyn Bissell. Yeah. This is Thaler again. One final attempt on that rope climb. Under 10 seconds remain. And it doesn't look like the athletes up there in lanes one and two were able to cross in time. Yeah. The horn is sounded. The event has come to a close. Marsha Yeager with an impressive victory, but I have a feeling we're going to be talking uh, about Patty Fela and the rope as we head in to the rest of the competition today and moving forward. Yeah, I think you're right, Ted. Uh, that was a very impressive performance by Marsha's part. You know, she won event number three, now add another win to her belt. And uh, this is turning into a huge competition, a huge performance on uh, Marsha Yeager's part. So starting off on that 300 meter run, that wasn't the thing that stumbled, you know, was the stumbling block for the ladies. It was really this rope, but boy, Marsha Yeager showed that she can handle that rope no problem at all. But it was the rope that prevented, presented a problem for Patty Fela. And she did not finish under the time cap. You can see the frustration on the faces and the body language of her fans. But Marsha Yeager, strong through the rope climbs, really, really strong strong through those uh, yoke carries. And now let's send it down to Nick Zielinski on the floor. Marsha Yeager, our event for a winner. I'm going to jump right to the chase here. You tore your ACL during the Masters Automatic Qualifier. How in the world are you competing at the CrossFit Games less than four months later and winning events? Well, I was really determined to make it back here because I came intimidated, I was a rookie, and this year I said, I am not gonna lose the running events. And so, with the torn ACL, I used a medical device that really helped and just took care of recovery, watched how I stepped, and I just really continued to work hard. Uh, momentum's now on your side as we head into event five and six today. How do you continue that climb up the leaderboard? Oh, it was awesome. My goal was to come and to have two wins and uh, accomplished. I'm not going to stop there. It's only Thursday. You've already got one. Let's shoot for three or four. How about that? Absolutely. The longer we go, the better I get. All right, Marsha, congratulations. Thank you so much. Again, that is Marsha Yeager. She takes event number four here for the Masters Women's 60-plus division. She comes in at 1533-52, followed by Long, Shashia, Havard, and Redinger, where you can see. And Havard moves into second overall with that fourth place finish. But of course, we have to see what happens uh, to Jaeger with that win in light of the finish or lack thereof from Patty Fela.
But it was all Marsha Yeager here in the Masters Women's 60 Plus event number four, Rope and Yoke. That wraps it up for our coverage today. We've got more action coming in and tune in tomorrow on games.crossfit.com.